So writing is a risky business. You might think, well, surely it's very safe. You sit down in front of a computer or with a notebook. What, what can go wrong? What's dangerous about that? But trust me, it's a skydive into the raw vulnerability of self-expression. With writing and with sex, we put ourselves on the line. We fear being seen or not being seen, of getting too close or not close enough, of not doing it right or never being good enough. Both writing and sex have the capacity to create intimacy, the feeling that comes from revealing our inner self to be actively witnessed by another. Writing, like sex, is a form of getting naked. So it's not the first time I've stood up in public to talk about writing, but it is the first time I've stood up and spoken about writing and sex, and that feels really risky, really risky. Um, you know what they say about public speaking? They say, stand up and just imagine all the audience in front of you naked. <laughs> you look amazing, <laughs> I have to say. You look incredible, but it still feels risky. Um, as risky as going to a dance workshop, as I did earlier this year, called God, Sex and the Body as risky as unveiling myself in the costume at that workshop, which was to do with embodying the archetype of mistress. Um, I leave it to your imagination to visualize what that looked like. I'm not gonna give the game away, but just to say that it did the job. <laughs> it was meant to do. <laughs> um, so the risk then, is the risk, or why is the risk worth taking? Um, because as one of my favourite writers, Anais Nin, who's a French memoirist and, and novelist, as she put it, sometimes the risk it takes to stay tight inside the bud is more painful than the risk it takes to blossom. And I think that this is what the French philosopher Hélène Sissou talks about when she talks about the concept of jouissance. It's a wonderful word, that, isn't it? Jouissance. It's like joyful, joy, juicy, jouissance. It means orgasm in French. And what she's doing is reappropriating it, adapting it to mean something around female abundance, a kind of mystical, sacred sexuality that has everything to do with power. And so for me, writing has become something about finding my own empowerment, finding a wisdom of the body, the connection between the charge of my sexual energy, my erotic energy, and its expression in words. So writing sexy rather than writing about sex per se. But it's taken me a long time to get here. Um, there were some clues along the way in my writing journey. About eight years ago, I was at a writing workshop, a drama, a script workshop, which was led by a, a playwright who's now kind of internationally renowned. And I read my work in progress, which was about, randomly, about a character who was stuck in a sound booth and burst out of the sound booth at the end. And she leaned forward and said to me, Rachel, you need to write about sex. <laughs> and I said, OK, right, OK, I will, I will. And I went home and wrote a script and it was commissioned by the BBC and broadcast. And what was it about? It was about nuns. <laughs> so some avoidance going on there, I think. <laughs> I'm an ex-Catholic, what can you say? Um, but where did that avoidance come from? That's what interests me now. It's some shame, some embarrassment, um, but mostly fear. And this is the very thing that's kept me from from being able to tackle writing about the body, about sex, with honesty and authenticity. For many years, I did an MA in novel writing and uh, I, I workshopped a, a piece in, of the novel in progress and the tutor said to me, Rachel, that was terrible. It was so full of cliches. I would like to nominate it for the Bad Sex in Fiction Awards. Um, I, I won't um, subject you to it tonight at all. But he was right. And it's because I think I was masking authenticity. I was externalizing the sexual act and I didn't have a vocabulary for how to write about sex from the inside. Looking back I can see also that my female character that I was writing about was disembodied because I was too. Um, and I was overlooking, <clears throat> I was overlooking that, uh, an intrinsic part of myself, my sexual self. I was denying intimacy first and foremost with myself, let alone with a reader. So I'm not writing about nuns anymore. 
Um, and I'm not writing about my own sexual journey either, which, you know, admittedly is a wonderful and necessary thing. But I'm, I'm working on that first novel, the one that I wrote in the MA, and doing that is a joyous integration of all of the lost parts of myself, all the ones I've kept hidden. So I'm, I'm there in the full expression of that mistress archetype that I embodied on the dance floor at God, Sex and the Body. And the, the Now novel, the novel version Now, touches on female empowerment and a full expression of the palette of bodily pleasure. What Isabel Losada in her book Sensation calls multicoloured sex. So she says, you know, sex doesn't have to be red hot all the time. Sometimes it can be blue with a shade of green. Sometimes it can be orange and sometimes it can be white. I'm also about to pitch a new radio drama. Um, and this will be about a woman discovering burlesque and the beginning of her sexual adventure into her own empowerment. Um, I imagine it might start with a, a woman's voice, with a voiceover of a woman telling her lover to keep the blindfold on just until she ex the point that she is ready for him to, to take it off. We'll see. Um, we'll see what the BBC make of that <laughs> and the average Radio 4 audience be interesting. And also my producer doesn't know it's coming her way. so. Um, Top secret, you heard it here first, folks. If it's commissioned, you'll remember. Um, so getting to this place, this place of empowerment, of, of bodily wisdom, of confidence, it's taken a lot of work. It's taken a lot of tackling my own conditioning, psychological and social and emotional. I mentioned that I'm Catholic, that's been a big thing for me. Um, and I've integrated years worth of five rhythms dancing and the beginnings of a Tantra journey, which started for me this year. And these days I want to write work that reflects who I am, the whole of me, and not keep parts of myself hidden. I'm not keeping anything in shadow. And of course, writing that shadow, that feels risky. It's a bit like unveiling my body before a new lover. I'm conscious of the scars and the imperfect bits, the bits that I think won't be revered and adored. But actually, really, what it might be is that raw honesty of being myself is the thing that will be revered and adored. So what makes good writing is what I think makes good sex. And for me, they're both about following an energetic flow of truth, the truth we can really feel. It's not about writing from the head. It's not chick lit. It's not Fifty Shades of Grey. It's not sex toy sex, but a uniting of the head with the heart and the body. It's listening to the physical sensations that come up on the inside, even when I'm sitting still. So part of my journey as a writer has been the realization that writing and sex can't be separated. They're both creative practices. So what would happen if we thought about sex, like writing, as an embodied creative act? Can we find a way of thinking about touch as what artists describe as mark making? Touch is a way of making meaning. Fingertips on the skin of a lover's body, creating patterns, creating beauty, creating connection. So if writing and sex are ways of revealing our inner self to be witnessed by another, then they both offer the opportunity to make our lives meaningful in being seen for who we really are, to fully connect with ourselves or with others. Sex might, after all, be another way of telling the story of ourselves, as the American poet Walt Whitman put it so beautifully, of singing the body electric. As in storytelling, the possibilities are endless, and your body or that of your lover becomes a blank page waiting for expression. So how can we start to rewrite our sex lives and get creative in our intimacy? Well, firstly, there are some really obvious things, I think, and things that, that speakers in the rest of the series have talked about quite a lot. Um, I think good sex, like good writing, requires us to be curious. It requires us to slow down and be present. It requires us to notice. It requires us to breathe. I've just realised I've not been breathing. <laughs> and it requires us to notice the internal sensations and being aware how they might manifest. How might they manifest outwardly? How do we act on those internal sensations? Secondly, we can be playful. 
Um, writers constantly rewrite their stories. They thrive on changing patterns of their own narratives. So can we assume different moods or roles? Is there a place for changing characters? Can we shapeshift? Can we take the risk to be more dominant or directive or more still, more reflective, more passionate or more tender? Thirdly, listen and follow. A writer listens to a deep internal voice. So in sex, can we do the same? Can we follow the pulses of our internal erotic charge? Can we direct it into the actual movements we make with our fingers, with our hands, with our mouths? So what I want to say tonight is that you don't have to be a writer to write the story of your sexual self. We can all tap into the thousand million choices we have about who we are and how we are with our lovers or with ourselves. But for that, we need to change the patterns. So let's play. Let's take the risk of listening to our most intimate selves. Let's really get on with that juicy, joyful jouissance. Let's find it in ourselves. And so to finish, I just want to ask you a question. Do you want to stay tight in the bud? Or do you want to take a risk? Do you want to celebrate the bursting, abundant energy of your creative sexuality and the blossoming of your own self-expression. Thank you. <laughs>